Liz Doherty and I am joining you today from sunny County Donegal in the northwest of Ireland. I'm absolutely delighted to be taking part in this series of Atlantic Arc workshops and just like to say a massive thank you to Simon Bradley and to Anna Wendy Stevenson for inviting me to come along and join you for the next week while as we do a workshop on some Donegal tunes. So in County Donegal we have a fiddle tradition that is really well known worldwide and that wasn't always the case of course. In the middle of the 20th century in Donegal as in many other places in Ireland the local style and repertoire was very much pushed to the margins as the emphasis came on promoting a national um, homogenised uniform style and repertoire of Irish music. But in the 1980s, an organisation was established here in Donegal called Cardis Mephidlery, and their work was all about resurrecting the Donegal style, promoting it, uh, remembering the older players, the older tunes and dances, and very much passing it on to the next generations. So very happy to report that the whole tradition is absolutely thriving here today in Donegal. The thing about the Donegal tradition though is that it's not just one single sound, it's not just one single style and even though we refer to it in that way it actually encapsulates lots of different colours, lots of different uh, tones, lots of different styles, lots of different individual stamps on the tradition um, and for me that's where the richness is. Indeed in Donegal what we have really is a community of sound um, we have many shared characteristics in terms of our style, the tempo we play at, some of the tunes that we have. So lots of shared um, sounds between us, but also a lot of our own individual imprints on it. So rather than it being a single style, um, maybe thinking of it as a community of sound, a community of practice, really speaks more truly to what's happening. And scholars like Aidan O'Donnell, for example, have recently written about this idea that this is what we have. It's not a single style, but more a community of sound. I totally love the idea that we're all part of this wider Atlantic arc. And it's something that I've always really felt drawn to, this idea that our tradition stretches far beyond the shores of Donegal and the shores of Ireland. Um, I've long been drawn to Scottish music. Um, and of course, there's huge historical connections between Donegal and Scotland, where, you know, people used to go to work in Scotland for several months of the year and come back and bring back music and songs with them, which then became part of the, the local sound and practice here. Um, and it was actually in Scotland in the late 1980s that I first met Alistair Fraser. And I was on tour actually with a group of Donegal fiddlers and we were at a party one night, imagine that, and uh, Alistair was there and he was playing all these tunes from Cape Breton, um, so Cape Breton in Nova Scotia, and I was immediately struck by these tunes. They just were so melodic and they seemed familiar but completely new to me at the same time. And I was so fortunate then a few years later to be able to go and spend months and months and months and some more months in Cape Breton where I ended up doing a PhD on the fiddle music tradition and totally fell in love with it, with the people, with the place and the music and it was that idea of it felt like home. It really, really did. It still feels like home and uh, just that idea that the fiddle and the fiddle music has kind of brought me on that journey from here in Donegal to Scotland and then from there on to Cape Breton and here I am back home again with that new uh, family of musician friends and music that keeps us all together. So the tune I'm going to share with you today is a highland called Loudoun's Bonnie Woods and it's associated with the playing of the legendary Donegal fiddle player Danny O'Donnell. Now a highland is a tune that actually started life as a Strats Bay in Scotland. And Strats Bays did make their way over to Donegal where they were played as a showpiece um, because we had no dance that was associated with it. So often the, the Strats Bay was danced to, of course, in the highlands of Scotland, but it was never danced to. The dance never made its way across to Donegal. 
So the Strathspey tune proper was played as a showpiece, but often Strathspey tunes then were modified slightly and adapted to suit a local couple dance called the Highland. So basically the Highland is a simplified version in effect. Um, often the dotted rhythms are evened out and sometimes the runs of triplets which characterise the Strats Bay are either left out or are reduced. And the titles of the Strats Bays are sometimes maintained, but often they were changed. And one of my favourite ones is Miss Lyle Strats Bay, a really well-known Strats Bay. And in Donegal, the Highland version of it is called The Cat That Kittled in Jamie's Wig. So you would absolutely never guess from the titles that it was completely uh, adapted and just a Highland version of the Strats Bay itself. So this one is called Loudon's Bonnie Woods and we're going to give it a go now. Okay, so I'm going to play the tune for you first of all to give you an idea of the melody and the rhythm. So this Highland is a single tune. So the first part is played once, followed by the B part, and then you repeat the whole tune then. Okay, so here we go. first part of the tune and we'll take it phrase by phrase. So there are four phrases here. The first phrase we have an answering phrase. Phrase three then brings back material from the opening and then it's all closed off with a new phrase at the end. So four phrases all together and a great deal of Irish music is structured in that way. So you never kind of think of the part as a linear thing so it's not, you know, you start at the beginning and you have to get all the way to the end of it. But instead, it's just broken into these little chunks or phrases. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to navigate when you're thinking of it in that way. So the first phrase is as follows. <laughs> we finish each phrase then on the up bow. So we start the strong beat on the down bow and the phrase finishes on the up bow. And that sort of bowing pattern is quite common within Donegal music, as is a lot of single bows. So you'll see a lot of single bowing happening here with just the occasional slur. Um, so for now, just concentrate on the first beat, the strong beat being on the down bow and the phrase ending on the up bow. So we'll try that again. So phrase one, Phrase two. Phrase three. And phrase four. And of course, we've ended in a down bow there because we're going to have a nice little pickup into the second part of the tune. We'll try the second part of the tune now. 
And again, we have four phrases here, so an identical structure to the first part. First phrase, an answering phrase, a third phrase that reminds us in this case of the material in phrase one, but is not identical. So there's a bit more of a challenge in the third phrase here. And then our fourth and closing phrase. So that leaves us nicely balanced in the second part of the tune. So we try that. So we start with our pickup, hence the up bow. Phrase two. Phrase three, again, starting on a pickup. And then our fourth phrase to close it off. And then that leaves us ready to start the first part again with a nice strong down bow on the opening note. So let's put that second part together. And that is the outline of the melody for Loudoun's Bonnie Woods. So we've learned the melody of the Highland, just the basic melodic line. Um, we've talked a little bit about the bowing and that of course brings us all around to the rhythm of the tune and the, the swing and the accents within the tune. So that gives us the, the basics, that gives us the, the bare bones of how the melody works here. And what we get to do now is take that melodic outline and colour it in whatever way we would like ourselves. And this is one of the great joys of Irish music is that we all get the same or a very similar outline of the tune and then we get to put our own stamp on it. And so this is where things like ornamentation and articulation and variation and emphasis all come into play. So you get to make all your own choices around that, to colour in the tune, colour in that outline, whatever way you like. I'm going to share with you some of the things that I use to colour in this particular Highland. And indeed, these are things that I use in practically all of my tunes. So the first one is um, where you have two notes of the same pitch happening together. Um, it's a great opportunity to put in a little grace note. So in the first phrase of this tune, we have two high Ds. Just there. And again, we could just separate those by adding a little grace note using the fourth finger. So you're doing the first D up. And just as you change bow direction for the second D, you're getting that little extra bite on it. And just a nice little crunchy rhythmic ornament there with the fourth finger. So we have. And that's one that I use quite a lot in all of my tunes. Something else that we like to use quite a lot in Donegal is the lower string. Um, so to sound the lower string to give emphasis to a single note or to act as a drone or as a double stop. So at the start of this tune again, around that G, F sharp G, we can sound the low G string, just hit off it to give a bit of emphasis at the start. Or in fact, we can change the rhythm and the melody of the tune ever so slightly by replacing the G F sharp G with just a long G and using the double strings there um, to really put emphasis on that. So we have. nice little bit of variation there changing the melody and the rhythm but also bringing in the low G string there. Something else that can be another way to add variation to that first phrase to the opening of the tune is adding a second note in, adding a second G in at the start. So instead of we have we get two G's 
and it becomes almost like a bowed treble. So, so you have G, G, F, G, then slurred. And with this type of effect, I tend to use the middle, lower middle part of the bow and to really dig in weight on the bow for the first note. So in slow motion, it sounds quite disgusting. You get that kind of crunch on the first note, but you get the, you get the, the nice effect then when it's up to speed. So. And again, you can combine that with the lower string as well. So you get, you get the full effect of it all happening there. So basically with that first phrase, without those first few notes, you have all kinds of options. So you can play it straight. With of course your grace note up in the Ds. You can play. Sound in the low G string against it. You can change the rhythm. Or we can add in our little extra G and have. So even within those first few notes, already you have lots of ideas to keep the flow of the tune going, to keep it uh, moving and to make your own choices around that, to put your own stamp on it. So let's look at some ways in which we might add some colour to the second part of the Highland. And an ornament that I would use quite a lot here is the roll. Now the roll is an ornament that's popular in all fiddle styles in Ireland and indeed across all instruments as well. And it exists in two forms. We have the long roll, which uh, lasts to the value of a dot of crotchet, and the short roll, which lasts for a crotchet. So if we look at the long roll first and where it might fit in the tune, um, we start the second part and we're going to do a long roll on the note G, so the high G here. So we see that each of those phrases has a long roll on the G at the start. You'll also have noticed that in order to fit it in, we've had to change some of the main melody notes. Otherwise, we don't have a dotted crotchet to give over to the roll. So instead of the, the basic melody, which we learned, we're going to have So slight melodic variation there to allow for the long roll to fit in there. So what does a long roll actually look like? Well, we have five pitches in a long roll. We have the main melody note, we go above it, back to the main melody note again, underneath it, and finally land back on the main melody note one more time. So for a G roll, as we have here, the notes would be G, A, G, F sharp and G. And again, single bow up or single bow down. Now, in the playing of the roll, the notes are not all given equal value. So the first note is stretched out. And then the rest of the notes come clustered at the end of that. So we have the effect. So we get that effect of the other notes there. So we don't really hear the pitches involved, we just get the effect. So stretch the first note out and then really quickly glance the third finger off for the upper grace note and barely lift the G off to allow the F to, to sound there. And um, Just another little trick for the roll is when you're playing the G, keep the two fingers down so that your F sharp is there ready and waiting. It's not sitting up here that you have to pull it down in that quick time frame. So two fingers onto the G and then a quick glance off for the third finger A and then the merest lifting off of the finger to get the F sharp effect in there. So that's the long roll. So the short roll then is very much like the longer version except here we leave out the first note. So we actually leave out the G note in this case and our short roll consists of the upper grace note A, G, F sharp and G. So it has much more of a rhythmic effect because we're really starting on that little grace note at the start. So we have and 
and again on a single down bow or a single up bow. And again, you're just glancing off the third finger for the A and just barely lifting off the G to get the effect of the F sharp there. In the tune, whereas the long roll sounded like this, the short roll will sound like this. So we get that much more rhythmic effect. And then of course you can alternate them, put lots of long rolls in, put lots of short rolls in, whatever way suits yourself, whichever ones you prefer, they're all fine to add into the second part of that tune. Something that can be really fun to do when there are two or more fiddle players playing together is to play the same tune but an octave lower. And this is a practice that was really common in County Donegal, also in a few other places in Ireland like County Kerry. Um, and again over in Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. So what you're doing is you're matching the same accent and rhythm. The bowing, the strong bow and the downbeat can still be maintained, but you're changing the fingering obviously to suit the lower register. Um, most tunes in Donegal allow for this to happen. Um, and if the range isn't quite there, for example, in the first G, F, G of this tune, it's not quite there, we don't have that low F sharp, so we can just play around on the G and that's absolutely fine to get the effect of the lower octave happening here. So let's try it, so join along in your own octave in the regular octave or take the time then to explore the lower octave for this and any other tune that takes your fancy. So here we go, one, two, three, four. <laughs> tunes used for a couple dance here in Donegal and while the dance had disappeared really for a good many years it's brilliant to see them coming back into popularity and people dancing highlands again. For dancers a single highland can be played over and over to accommodate the dancing or a number of highlands can be put together in a set and for a listening audience the highland can be um, followed by a reel so a highland reel set much the same way as we have the Strass Bay Reel combination in Scotland and in Cape Breton. So I'm going to share a second Highland with you here. This one has no name and I got it from the playing of Paul O'Shaughnessy. So I'm going to play this one first and then we will follow with the one we already learned today. One, two, three, four.
like to learn any more about the Highlands of Donegal, there's a great book called From Dunkeld to Dunkeneely, The Highlands and Straps Bays of Donegal. And it was compiled by Keevy McKee from Cardiff the Fidlery and Jack Shrovers. And it gives you loads of information about the history of the tune types and how they've existed here in Donegal. And it is literally a treasure trove of all of the tunes of this type that we can find within the tradition here. Um, and for more information about the Donegal fiddle tradition in general, check out donegalfiddlemusic.ie. There's all kinds of stories and resources and history and everything there to allow you a deeper dive into the Donegal tradition. So we've come to the end of our workshop here today. So I hope you've enjoyed yourselves um, finding out a little bit about the highlands of County Donegal. And I really hope that you've enjoyed all of your discoveries around the Atlantic Art Workshops and all the diversity and colour and joy that we have in our shared traditions. So thanks again for taking part and a big thank you again to Simon and to Anna Wendy for making it all happen. And hopefully we'll see you guys in real life sometime not too far down the road. Bye bye for now.